Welcome to Biomediation and Dr. Mickey. In this video, we will continue the factors affecting the contaminant degradation. And last video, we explained we have two different factors. We have biological factors and also the environmental factors. Before I show you this figure and summarizing the factors affecting the contaminant degradation. We have biological factors already explained before and this video today we need to explain the environmental factors which including the redox the potential, soil matrix the potential, bioavailability, geologic and hydrogeological factors which including the adsorption and absorption and also containing the contaminant migration in ground water. So all of these environmental factors will be explained after the break. Welcome back. The first environmental factors we have today is the geological and the hydrogeological factors, which including the adsorption and absorption. What does it mean the adsorption? Adsorption means the bending of organic compounds to the surface of the solid substance. So the substance will be attached only onto the surface of the solid substance. And this absorption process can be determined by many factors as the relative affinity of the compound for a solid matrix and also the surface area of the matrix and also another factor is the volatility or solubility of the compound in water as well. The second process is the absorption and in this process the contaminant can penetrates into the mass of the solid matrix, for example, like the soil particles. And both adsorption and absorption can be reduced the availability of the contaminant to most microorganisms, and the rate of the chemical metabolized can be also reduced. So if you look at this figure, we have the two different particles. Some particles can be absorbed the second, this is the right side adsorbed. So you can see right side adsorption, the particles they can be only onto the surface of the particle. And the absorption, the particles they can be penetrate into the uh, particles. Another environmental factor we have today is the contaminant migration in groundwater. And this migration may be occurs within the aquifer and can be controlled with many physical and chemical properties of the contaminant. And one of these physical properties is the hydraulic conductivity. And is one of the primary aquifer characteristics that must be understood to effectively predict the contaminant migrate or not. And also evaluate the possibilities for the adding materials to enhance the bioremediation process. If you look at this figure, this figure shows the two different hydraulic conductivity and hydraulic conductivity, this is the, we can measure the, how easily the fluid like water within the soil particles it can pass through the porous media. We have two different type of soil, right side you can find the dense or condensed soil, the other this is loose soil. That means that the particles between each other, they have still some space. This space is easily to, you know, to flow the, uh, the to pass through the water, through the uh, soil particles. While the dense, no space, that means difficult to, to flow, that means the low permeability, while the loose soil, easy to flow, that means high permeability. So according to this hydraulic conductivity, you can predict this contaminant can migrate from place to place or not. According to the soil properties, do you have loose soil or maybe you have the dense soil? Another factors may be considered are the diffusion and the dispersion of the contaminant. So the dispersion is the mechanical mixing and the spreading of the contaminants within the aquifer. 
And the diffusion is the movement of contaminants along a concentration gradient due to their kinetic energy. So these are the different environmental factors under geological and hydrogeological factors. So we mentioned the absorption and adsorption. Also we mentioned the contaminant migration in groundwater, which including the hydraulic the conductivity and also some diffusion and dispersion as well. The second factor we have, this is the called the bioavailability. The bioavailability means is the contaminant available to the microorganism or not? When the contaminant is available to the microorganism, that means the microorganism can consume that uh, uh, contaminant at the same time able to utilize and degrade as well. So the concentration of the bioavailable contaminant is often less than the total concentration measured. At the same time, it's important to note that the rate and the extent of the contaminant degradation is proportional to the concentration of bioavailable contaminant and not the total concentration. If you have lower concentration of the contaminant, that means the biodegradation will be higher. If you have high concentration of the contaminant, that means maybe the biodegradation will be less. So another factor we have is the soil matrix potential. So when the water is the, in contact with the solid particles like the clay or even the sand particles within the soil, we have adhesive intermolecular force. This force called the soil potential. This force between the water and the solid can be large, also important. So this force can promote the surface tension and the formation of what we call the meniscus. If you look at this figure, you can see the water and the mercury, for example, and you can find the surface of the uh, uh, water. The, the, the surface of the water will be in concave meniscus while mercury, this is the convex meniscus. So the meniscus is the curve in the upper surface of a liquid close to the surface of the container or another object if you have. This is caused by the surface tension or what we call it the, uh, the potential within the solid uh, matrix. So this meniscus can be produced due to the force or the potential. When the water is in contact with the solid particles or even container. Another factor we have, this is called the redox potential, oxidation reduction potential. So this redox potential able to provide and measure the electron density of the system. When the oxidation reduction reaction occurs, that means some electron acceptors and donors as well, so can be measured. So biological energy is obtained from the oxidation of the compounds in which electrons are transferred to various more oxidized compounds referred to as the electron acceptors. So if we have low electron density, that means the redox potential more than 50 millivolts this indicates the oxidation process and also aerobic conditions. While if we have high electron density, that means the redox potential less than the 50 uh, millivolt, this indicating the reduction and also the anaerobic conditions by the biodegradation of the microorganism. Also, if we got the positive results within 100 to 400 millivolt, that means indicates the good aeration means the very good uh, aerobic conditions, which may be optimal for the bowel remediation process. So this is the end of this video today. And please don't forget to share, like and subscribe and also activate the bell to reach all of my new videos. Thank you, good luck and bye-bye.